Other than Ross Perot, has there ever been a third party candidate that's been part of national presidential debates? And are you hoping to be the next? Uh, no, the, the presidential debates are controlled by what's called the Commission on Presidential Debates. And they set this up after Perot. And it's a jointly owned nonprofit corporation of the Democrats and Republicans and their former chairs of the board. And uh, they set criteria to leave everybody else out. Uh, the League of Women Voters used to do the presidential debates. And what we'll be doing is urging them to go to media organizations and do their own debate and invite those third party candidates that are on a lot of ballots, which will probably be the Greens and the Libertarians. And uh, the, the League did that during this last governor's race. Only Governor Cuomo didn't show up. The Republican did. The other two uh, third party candidates did. Unfortunately, the, the media didn't broadcast that. But, you know, that's the kind of thing civic organizations and news organizations need to do because it's not right to have the, you know, two, the duopoly parties controlling the debate. It just narrows it down to two parties that are funded mostly by wealthy special interests. And that's why, you know, half of Americans don't vote in presidential elections. They just feel like nobody's representing us. And as you look at the climate in Washington these days, people probably wonder what success an independent third party candidate could, could have trying to fit in with, uh, with the polarization that we see there now. Well, if we had you know, a Green Caucus in Congress, I think the polarization would diminish. When you have three or four candidate races, it doesn't pay to go negative. When you just have two, you may get some mud on you when you throw the mud, but you get more mud on your opponent. And so that becomes a, a tactic and both parties do that. But when you got a third candidate out there, it's like, you remember uh, Reverend Sharpton when he ran for US Senate here in New York and the Democrats had their knives out for each other and they were cutting each other up and Sharpton was just putting forward a positive program. In fact, he showed up to one debate with a bucket as a prop. And they said, what's that bucket for? And he said, it's mud in case these other candidates run out of it. And before that, his status, you know, in the public opinion wasn't very high, but because he ran a positive campaign when everybody was negative, his status elevated. So the dynamic when you have a multi-party system, multi-party debate is more positive because it pays the campaign positively. And then when you're in legislatures, you got to build a majority coalition to pass legislation. Well, then they got to talk to the Greens and they got to build coalitions. If the Greens and the Libertarians are in there, we'll agree on some issues like uh, reforming drug policy and protecting civil liberties and cutting the military budget. Uh, whereas the Democrats and Republicans will be on the opposite side on that. On economic issues, you know, we're closer to the Democrats, the Libertarians are closer to the Republicans. So the coalitions shift. So I think having a multi-party system would be positive for our politics and would reduce the polarization. And with everything happening, with the impeachment hearings, with a dozen candidates still seeking the Democratic nomination, does it overshadow some of the important issues that should be getting attention in, in the presidential race? You mentioned, obviously, uh, the, 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 nuclear, the nuclear arms. Are there other major issues that are overshadowed by a lot of the, the politics in Washington? Oh, yeah. I mean, when I watch the Democratic debates, I'm shouting at the TV, you know, like when, when Warren and Sanders were trying to answer to the other people that want a public option and they got all into the weeds, I said, just tell them the public option costs more because you're keeping that whole bureaucracy for the private insurance companies in, in place. And uh, yeah, that would have been a simple answer. So uh, yeah, it's frustrating. And of course the nuclear arms issue is not being discussed. Um, but on the other hand, I think we have influence. Like I think the Sanders Green New Deal, he brought back in the ban on fracking and new fossil fuel infrastructure, the cuts on military spending, the phasing out of nuclear power. Now we've been blasting you know, the Democrats, this non-binding resolution for a Green New Deal for leaving those things out. And while it's not covered in the mass media, it, it's going through the policy monks and the think tanks and the policy advisors to these candidates. So I have a hunch Sanders people heard us. And are you, are you satisfied when, for example, Sanders and Warren, both calling for Medicare for all, a major party candidate now having that position? You, of course, you've been uh, backing a single payer system for many years, but now to see it where a major party candidate has that on the agenda, is there at least some satisfaction that you've pushed that issue where now it's in the forefront? It's, yeah, definitely. I mean, this is more about getting policies passed than sitting in an office somewhere with a title. And that may be the goal here. You're setting the groundwork for the, for the next decade and beyond. Yeah, we're moving the ball down the field. 
we may not get to the end zone this time, but you know, eventually.